Renee Peñalosa, the National Election Supervisor and Moderator. We are running two parallel separate elections amongst listener and staff members to seat nine and three delegates respectively on KPFA's local station board. All listener members who donate a minimum of $25 between July 1st, 2020 and June 30th, 2021 are eligible to vote. Please remember to vote before October 15th, 2021. If you did not get a ballot, leave a message on 510-993-0320 for a paper ballot or file a ballot request on elections.pacifica.org for an electronic ballot. The purpose of this forum is to give you an opportunity to make an informed decision when casting your vote. After candidates present themselves, we will take your questions and we invite you to call 510-848-4425 around 11.30 a.m. The order of candidates was determined by random sequence generator from random.org. Candidates now each have 90 seconds to present themselves. Please note that all viewpoints presented are those of the participants and do not reflect the position of the Pacific Foundation or KPFA. I will start with a statement from Leslie Howard and Daniel Borgstrom, who could not make it. Leslie Howard, if you vote for me, you will get someone who cares deeply about freedom of the press and voices of dissent, someone with fundraising experience, someone who knows the disparate political cultures of rural versus urban America. Daniel Borgstrom, please read my statement at rescuepacifica.net. Our network needs financial stability. Opponents directing Pacifica most of the 20 years, past 20 years, consistently undermine that. Bylaws rewrite yes, but not by those tanking the network. Vote rescuepacifica.net. We will continue with Vicente Cruz. You have 90 seconds. Thank you. Well, if you do vote for me, what you'll get is a candidate who will be in the streets with you asking members and listeners what they would like to see in their community radio station. I do believe that KPFA could be a stronger, more radical, progressive voice in getting people before profit candidates elected in the sense that educating the listeners and members on some of more alternative candidates out there that don't get uh, any mainstream coverage. I am an event and fundraising coordinator for the Oakland Greens. Um, how I navigate the capitalist, corrupt capitalist system is I'm also in event production and have been doing that as, as a stagehand uh, since 1989 as a producer. So I also, we took the Oakland Greens from being a $40 a year contributing organization to then bringing it up to having a couple of thousand dollars uh, a year and we're continuing to grow. And I think I can bring that also uh, to help with more, more radical events that would help in fundraising as well. Also, what I do is I have a hope, if you've ever been to the local station board meetings, uh, some of them can be pretty cruel and nasty. So if you go to any of my statements, you can find them on Oakland Green Party YouTube or oaklandgreens.org or also thank at you. The Pacifica Shot. And I can also... Thank you, Vicente. Uh, next is Carlos Cohen. You have 90 seconds. Carlos Cohen, you have 90 seconds. I'm sorry, I was on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Carlos Cohen, and I have been a listener and member of KPFA for over 30 years. At a time when fascist groups seem to be growing in the US, and there seems to be much confusion in the population, due in good part to propaganda and misinformation from many mainstream and right wing media channels. I strongly believe that the Pacifica Network stands as one of the few channels for truth, independent and progressive analysis, anti-racist voices, and mental and spiritual health. I want this network to end its internal dysfunction and stop the name calling. 
I'll repeat, I want this network to end its internal dysfunction. I'm open to working with all groups and with anybody on helping solve Pacifica major financial crisis and problems. I want this network to expand and be a strong independent voice for progressive critical analysis throughout the US. Again, my name is Carlos Cohen and I respectfully ask for your vote as, and ask you to please vote for all the candidates on the KPFA protectors slate. And for more information, please go to KPFA protectors, one word with S at the end, dot O-R-G. Thank you much. Thank you, Carlos. Next is Fred Cook. You have 90 seconds. You're muted. Uh, okay, so uh, for more detail on what I think about all this, please check my statement on the elections.kpfa.org website. Um, my background is in community organizing, nonviolent direct action training, union activism. You uh, muted, you got muted somehow. Okay. Um, helped found the community video center in San Diego and built it up to a, uh, a large organization. Um, my orientation is to bring that same approach to the Pacifica network. I think that we have learned a lot of useful things at KPFA and that if each local station has as its base level budget the amount that it's raising um, and we provide help in terms of training so that people can build from the grassroots up community coalitions production collectives and eventually use slots on the airtime that were funded by um, syndicated programming can be filled in with local programming as they are able to develop it. Thank you. That was Fred Cook. Next is Fred Dodsworth. You have 90 seconds. Hi, my name is Fred Dodsworth and I'm asking for your support. I'm a 30 plus year journalist. I'm an active community member. I am on the steering committee for Berkeley Citizens Action. I was one of the uh, steering committee members for Berkeley Tenant Union. I co-hosted the Tenant Union uh, 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 convention for the last 12 years. Uh, I'm actively involved in local politics and I'm an active journalist. And I believe that, that it is critical that the Pacifica Network, which represents the potential for over 60% of the voting public in the United States be better managed. Currently, our numbers are down enormously. We have had some real problems with our management over the last 20 plus years. We have sold two critical assets that were funded by KPFA, one, the studio next door to the, uh, the station and the other, the national board. Currently, the Houston station is selling their only uh, real estate uh, uh, holdings. And this is, this is a real problem. Too many of these stations run at a deficit. We need to bring responsible, financial responsibility to the network. And we need to figure out a way to build allies. We need to figure out a way to build together because frankly, the organization has been very rancorous for far too long, and I will work hard to stop that. Please vote for me. Thank you. Thank you, Fred Dodsworth. Next is Thomas Lord. You have 90 seconds. Hi, uh, I'm Thomas Lord. I, I live in Berkeley. Uh, I'm not on either of the two slates that you might have received a lot of advertising from. Um, Let's see, a little, little bit of background. Uh, I've volunteered as a one-on-one -on -one writing coach at uh, Berkeley Middle School. Uh, I've been a city housing commissioner uh, in my career as a software engineer. I'm proudest of the work I did for uh, the nonprofit Free Software Foundation. Um, I'm running because I see two things. I see a KPFA that is not living up to its potential uh, while the board, the fractious board, 
has been ineffective at improving the situation at all for the longest time. Um, and uh, I see a network that is in dire straits and that may well take the station down with it. At this late date, uh, it's really critical that KPFA try to expand its programming in new directions, attract a new and uh, frankly younger audience, that it build up its membership, that it become more politically relevant. You'll hear a lot, I suspect, uh, today from people about uh, their views of KPFA News. Here's mine. Uh, KPFA News is wonderful as far as it goes. It's woefully inadequate in its coverage of the climate emergency, of the economic emergency, uh, uh, and, and uh, frankly, of the kind of reconfigurations, permanent reconfigurations, that this pandemic and the climate emergency are, are imposing on our society. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas Lord. Next is Pete Ferrugio. You have 90 seconds. Thank you. Uh, I'm a member of Rescue Pacifica. Uh, please see our full program at rescuepacifica.net. The local station board must play its mandated role of oversight and supervision of the station management. We must pull our station out of the orbit of the racist pro-imperialist Wall Street Democrats and reinvigorate the Pacifica spirit of fighting for the common people against war and exploitation. To revive this spirit, we must revamp our programming away from mainstream media propaganda uh, with multilingual broadcasting that involves local groups and individuals who are struggling against the system. For example, union organizing drives, rent strikes, fights against gentrification and absentee landlords, resistance to school closings and privatization, <clears throat> and actions to defend undocumented immigrants. Attracting large numbers of new and younger members from our diverse Bay Area communities is a better way to build fiscal security than interminable boring pledge drives. We must bring back the elected program council with open meetings so members can participate and share ideas about program improvement and developing new programs. Thank you. Thank you, Pete Ferrugio. Next is Donna Carter. You have 90 seconds. Hi, I'm Donna Carter. Uh, I'm a nurse and community activist here in Berkeley. Um, I'm a longtime KPFA listener. Uh, I feel the station is being run quite uh, well organizationally, but in that process, we've lost some of the uh, vitality and unpredictability, truthfully, of uh, community radio. And we need to invite our community on the station. I feel almost every show uh, that deals with uh, political and social issues should have uh, a community activist participant in it. Um, right now, we have a lot of um, uh, programs that are kind of intellectual, but I think we need younger voices and community voices in on the shows. Um, I feel that the LSB, Local Station Board, should be, get a chance to actually participate in this and uh, get a voice in programming. Thank you. Thank you, Donna Carter. Next is Elizabeth Milos or Milos. You have 90 seconds. Yes, thank you. My name is Elizabeth Milos and I'm uh, running with the Rescue Pacifica slate and I'm asking not only for your vote for me, but all of the Rescue Pacifica um, candidates. Um, Daniel Borgstrom he couldn't be here today, but I would also urge you to vote for him as well. I'm a healthcare interpreter, a union member, and I've been a KPFA listener for many, 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 many years. Um, I'm here to help bring some accountability. And even though some of the uh, protector people uh, are saying, talking about the um, infighting, I'd like to tell you that um, to ask for accountability is not infighting, it's asking for accountability. And that's one of the responsibilities of the LSB board members. I'd like to tell KPFA listeners that we have been shock doctrined. Um, as a Chilean American, I can tell you that I know it when I see it. Um, I know that most of you would rather get on the business, you know, to making 
Pacifica and KPFA stronger, but accountability means asking difficult questions and demanding answers. It's hard to stop the infighting when we have members of the uh, protector slate who are continuing to bring lawsuits again against Pacifica, costing Pacifica now $71,000 and also forming shell uh, companies or corporations, not profits, where they are, the person is a chief financial officer of, which would be um, getting the assets of Pacifica in the event of a receivership, which is what they are requesting of the court. Um, thank so, you. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth um, Milos. Next is Zach Kaldvir. You have 90 seconds. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to even spend time answering what was just said. Uh, but for over two decades, <clears throat> I have served as a communications specialist and political advocate on a broad range of social, economic, and environmental justice issues. Uh, as far as education matters, I have uh, earned a master's degree in telecommunications policy and a bachelor's degree in mass media from the University of California, San Diego. I am running for the KPFA local board of directors because I believe that there's been an ongoing toxic brew of corporate underwriting and incompetent leadership, not at KPFA as much, but certainly at the national board and <clears throat> some of the other stations. Uh, this is combined with uh, unmanageable bylaws that has resulted in a severe loss of multiple sources of Pacifica's income, as well as the imminent danger of insolvency. So at the end of the day, I want KPFA to represent independent news focused radio that engages, persuades and informs uh, and when done right builds trust and KPFA must continue to earn that trust by covering the social movements and political dynamics that the corporate media ignores, serving to not just inform the public and speak truth to power, but speak truth about power. So I will work to enact- Thank you. Oh, is that it? Wow. Thank you, Zach Kaldvir. Next is Don McClay. You have 90 seconds. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> uh, my name is Don and I'm whoever's coughing. Uh, my name is Don McClay, and I live and work in Oakland. I'm a machinist and a network engineer, and I sit on a couple of other boards. Boards are not new to me. I look at board membership, and I'm a member of the current board, as being the job of trying to make sure the organization runs well. And I see three things that I think we should be focusing on. Uh, first is we need to expand our membership, and I think we need to be doing that off the air. Our members, the people who are not listening to us are not listening to us. We need to get out into the community, especially into the younger communities, and we need to be doing the slow but steady kind of work that makes any organization better known. The second thing I think we should do is we should make good use of our existing resources and become one of the leading news sources in the country. We have everything we need to do it. And I think it's probably just a question of better coordination, recruiting volunteers, and just a lot of hard work. And as a board member, my third focus is good management of the organization. I would really like to see better reports, reports that have history and comparison. I think we need information on how we're running, how we're fundraising, what our membership looks like, how that compares to others, and how that compares to our own past. Thank you. Thank you, Don McClay. Next is Adisa Armand. You have 90 seconds. Good morning, everyone. I am Adisa Armand and I'm part of the Rescue Pacifica Listening Board Slate. And we bring many decades of integrity, accountability, competency, and courage to this board. And I urge you to vote for all of us. I'm relatively new to this, about three months into this process. I've served my community as an organizer, educator, and pastor, and I've served on several nonprofit organizations in various capacities. I've also done a lot of anti-racism work nationally and internationally. 
a motivating factor for my candidacy is to represent underrepresented persons, especially black and brown people and youth whose voices will bring a broad concept of their understanding of how they can be involved in our community radio outreach. Additionally, I believe KPFA's news can be and should be more worldwide, and it should be from reliable sources. I believe that KPFA can be an example of what terrestrial nonprofit community-based radio should be and can be, and I thank you. Thank you, Adisa Armand. Next is Rich Stone. You have 90 seconds. Uh, good morning. My, my name is uh, yeah, Rich Stone. I would uh, really like to yeah, have you know. Uh, I'm a long time, about 25 year listener of uh, you know, KPFA and subscriber as well. I, like others here, rec represent the Rescue Pacifica slate. I'm an anti war uh, veteran of foreign war. And served in the United States Navy, I'm a long time, uh, you know, as an activist, I'm a long time member of the of the San Francisco Greed Party, a delegate to the San Francisco Labor Council, and on the executive board of the American Postal Workers Union, where I've worked at the post office for more than a quarter century as well. I also served on the community advisory board uh, you know, for for three years and. Uh, and that's pretty much of what has uh, bought me you know, in this uh, general direction and uh, to be a candidate here today, being that uh, that do that uh, you know taking my community outreach experience over the years and actually applying it in terms of both uh, community advisory board forums and at uh, yeah, listener town halls at uh, local station board meetings, I helped facilitate some of those. Uh, uh, you know, you know, meetings, uh, notably once with the you know the Freedom for uh, you know, you know, Julian uh, Assange, which I also carried that water through the San Francisco Labor Council to actually <clears throat> help pass that resolution. I would like to see the Program Council uh, uh, you know reinstated and a lot more youth-oriented uh, uh, shows, both from uh, getting people from Thank the you. outside and as well as uh, uh, you know utilizing the apprentice. Thank you, Rich. Have more shows. Thank you. Thank you, Rich Stone. Next is Amber Jayanti. You have 90 seconds. Uh, you need to unmute yourself. Okay, great. In the words of cutting edge musician, Mike Stout, we need a new system. We need a new system. The old ones gotta go. Amber Jayante here. I am a member of the Rescue Pacifica Coalition running for the, um, for the board, the LSB board. Voting for us means deleting the presently reigning exclusive repressive corporate protector system and adding in, <laughs> uh, opening the door for our truly progressive, inclusive, egalitarian, more youth oriented program council system to enter. Uh, voting for us means putting what you, our listeners, want front and center. I'm a Code Pink Woman for Peace. I worked for the Sanders campaign 15 and 20. I was uh, asked to leave the Democratic uh, Convention in uh, 2015 because uh, Hillary was the shoe-in uh, when I wanted to be a, a, a representative. Um, I've had extensive involvement with Occupy, no nukes. Professionally, I'm an author, I'm a teacher, I'm a practical mystic who is dedicated to integrating the teachings of the non-racist, non-sexist, non-denominational, uh, or I should say pan-denominational uh, Kabbalah into my daily life uh, and encouraging others to do likewise. Thank you, Amber. Thank you. Thank you, Amber Jayanti. Next is James McFadden. You have 90 seconds. Hello, <clears throat> um, I'm James McFadden. I'm a research physicist at Houston Berkeley and a member of the KPFA Local Station Board. I belong to affinity group called Rescue Pacifica whose vision for Pacifica is outlined at rescuepacifica.net. I suggest you go check it out. My primary interests are keeping KPFA corporate free and improving programming. KPFA is one of the Bay Area gems, but there is definitely room for improvement. 
We need to serve a younger, more diverse demographic worried about war, healthcare, and climate change. For a summary of the problems at KPFA, please check out my Counterpunch article. Just Google Counterpunch and James McFadden. If you want a more anti-war, anti-corporate news, please vote for the Rescue Pacifica slate. If you want a more functional local station board, please vote for the Rescue Pacifica slate. Thank you. Thank you. That was James McFadden. We now move on to your questions. The, the number to call in is 510-848-4425. Please keep your question or comment brief and address to all candidates. Candidates will have 30 seconds each to respond. Candidates may skip by saying skip. Andrew from SoCal, you are live on KPFA. What is your question? Yeah, greetings all. Um, I'm a monthly sustainer. I donate on a monthly basis and I'm a member of KPFA. Um, I'm aware that the Pacifica National Board has mandated that all stations have a monthly report to the listener by both the manager, the station manager, and the local station board. But I'm not aware that that's been happening at KPFA in the years I've been listening to it. So as a member of the board, would you ask and demand that your manager, your general manager, come on the air once a month and respond to the listeners about what's going on at the station and take questions and input from the listeners, as well as allow the local station board to do the same once a month, come on the air, open up the phone lines and respond to the listeners who, that you, who you represent. And again, this has been mandated by the Pacifica National Board. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. So we'll start with Vicente Cruz. You have 30 seconds. Thank you. Yes, I would is the easy answer. And if that would not happen, I would make sure that in today's technological age, that at least I would convince other board members and, and definitely myself to put it out on our own social media. So not just go and ask the manager to do it, but actually be progressive in actually taking action to make sure that it comes out somehow and gets over there to the members and listeners. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Carlos Cohan, you have 30 seconds. Thank you. Uh, well, I, I have to admit, I'm not familiar with that uh, issue, but I would consider it, I would support it. Um, the only thing I'm worried about is that there is uh, specific personnel issues that should be confidential and should not be on the air. It's just basic common sense and ethical. But other than that, the other issues, issues of programming, yes, I would support that. Thank you, Carlos. Fred Cook, you have 30 seconds. And yes. unmute yourself. Yes, I am very much in favor of following the bylaws and of having the general manager at each station appear at least monthly to give a report and answer questions. And I'm with Vicente about doing what we can as local station board to ensure that we are communicating with listeners. Um, I would like to see more accountability. And if we create a nonviolent communication you, environment, then the station manager should come up the air. Uh, thank you, Fred Cook. Fred Dodsworth, you have 30 seconds. I'm fine with having a, a report. I think it's kind of a waste of airtime to do it on the air. That's singing to the choir and reducing, frankly, our uh, dirty laundry to the, the listeners. I think it should be on the website. I think it should be a regularly posted thing, uh, but I'm really not interested in more yammer and bickering on air. Thank you, Fred Dodsworth. Thomas Lord, you have 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, I'm just struck by the notion that that would automatically lead to bickering. I think it's an excellent idea, and I thank the caller for suggesting it. Um, to, my, to my perspective as a member and listener, uh, decisions about programming are opaque. The general direction of the station is opaque. This is a way to fix that and a way to give listeners a bigger stake and attract more sustaining members like yourself. And thank you for being one, by the way. Thank you. 
Thomas Lord, Pete Ferrugio, you have 30 seconds. Yes, that's an a, a, accountability is a crucial part of the local station board. That's why local station board exists. And we in Rescue Pacifica think that the, the local station board should have accountability over the general manager and the program director. And they have ref the, the protector's clique that currently runs the local station board has refused to demand that the general manager uh, give regular reports to the listeners. In fact, they allowed him to, get, to give $80,000 of our money Thank you, Pete. to a lawyer in New York. Thank you. Thank you, Pete Ferrugio. Donna Carter, you have 30 seconds. Uh, I think it's a great idea. I'm really surprised that this has gone on this long, that there hasn't been a report from the general manager. Uh, I remember them in previous years. Uh, I think it will open the discussion of how to uh, improve finances, bring more membership and better programming in to uh, the membership to speak out about. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Oh, sorry. Donna Carter, Elizabeth Milos, uh, you have 30 seconds. Milos. Yes, definitely. And um, I agree and I would like to reiterate what uh, Pete has just mentioned as well. Um, it, the general manager doesn't seem to be giving any reports. The LSB voted to have meetings every other month. If the situation were, is as dire as they claim with their shock doctrine method methodology of uh, creating chaos, then blaming the others for chaos, um, then they would be having a meeting every month, not every other month. And the financial statements, there should also be a response, not for the following meeting, but actually the response should be given on Elizabeth. the same meeting time as well. Thank you. Zach Kaldvir, you have 30 seconds. Yeah, so I feel like I would want to educate myself more about this uh, specific question. Uh, I do know that uh, the KPFA management, as far as I know, has been doing an excellent job. That's why KPFA is doing the best by far of the five stations. Uh, I have more concern than the undemocratic, unaccountable national board uh, that is not only undergoing lawsuits, but has been a disaster. I'll just stop there. Thank you. Thank you, Zach Kaldvir. Don McClay, you have 30 seconds. Hi, uh, great question. And I'm also a sustaining member and I kind of feel that way. Since I've been on the board, there's been one report from the general manager and no uh, performance review, even though we're slated to do that. And for board members, a direction from our national board or something that's in the bylaws, that's not optional. That's our job description. And I think we should be doing it. Thank you, Don McClay. Adisa Armand, you have 30 seconds. Yes, thank you, caller, for that uh, question. And yes, I believe it's very important for the general manager to be uh, very much in tune with what the listeners want and what the, the, the local station board needs, uh, the accountability issue. And I feel that, that anytime management does not respond to the concerns of, of, the, of the people, then it's time to look at what is really important. What are the core values? Thank that you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Edi Salmond. Rich Stone, you have 30 seconds. Yes, uh, yeah, moving forward as, a, as from my CAB experience, Community Advisory Board, I do believe that accountability you know, you, you should exist on the level, of the, especially of the general manager who, who uh, even had, has not even met with the, the Community Advisory Board, let alone the local station board. So I uh, believe moving forward that, uh, that uh, we should uh, put this new day, uh, refer twice two day failed referendum behind us. And, Thank you. Uh, and uh, move forward with the current bylaws. Thank you. Amber Jayanti, you have 30 seconds. Yeah, hi. Timely question, wonderful question. Um, I believe regular communication is essential and I vote for uh, not putting it in writing because people don't read. So uh, an open forum would be wonderful. Thank you. 
Thank you, Amber JNT. James McFadden, you have 30 seconds. Uh, yes, I agree with the listener. I think we're a community uh, radio, which requires an informed uh, listeners. Listener democracy means that uh, listener members must have a voice in operations and local station board, including programming. And uh, I think efforts by uh, some of the groups uh, running uh, who've acted as gatekeepers protecting the GM from performing his duties, I think is, uh, or uh, I think is uh, wrong. And uh, I think such involvement would help our declining listener membership. Thank you, James. Thank you. We'll now move on to caller two. So Steve from San Francisco, you are live on KPFA. What is your question? Steve, are you still there? Oh, yeah. I wanted to find out where the candidates stand on the, the last bylaw election proposal, which eliminated the local station boards. And if they supported the elimination of local station boards with that bylaw proposal, why are they running for the KPFA local station board, which says that the, uh, the local station board has responsibility for evaluating the manager and also a finance committee and a, um, a budget, approving the budget. If they're not uh, in favor of that under the proposed bylaw change, why would they be running for the board? That's it. Uh, thank you. Order of responses. We have Carlos Cohan first. You have 30 seconds. Thank you. Uh, I think you are confused. Uh, the, the, the proposed by laws never eliminated the local station board. What they proposed was direct election of the Pacifica board. Temporarily, there was a different change, but then it, it would do that. The problem is that the present bylaws are not democratic. It's like the US Senate, where Delaware has the same representation as California or New York. That's why it was proposed. And the, the listeners, the members, it, it won by over 1,400 Thank votes. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, Fred Cook, you have 30 seconds. Yes, um, I didn't support that proposal. Um, I do support the idea of proportional representation of all of Pacifica's members electing the national board at large, but the role of the local station board in accounting and holding things responsible in a local area is very important. And I, I completely support that. I want it to go forward with community advisory board, local program council as well. Thank you, Fred Cook. Fred Dodsworth, you have 30 seconds. I didn't have a position on that. And frankly, uh, I'm concerned about the national board more so than the local board. I'm running for the local board because it's the place for me to do some good work. Uh, the idea that we are currently running at a loss across the system is catastrophic and will end this radio station. And we have to work hard to save our station and the only way to do that is to make sure that there's local accountability and that's what i'm here for thank you fred dodsworth thomas lord you have 30 seconds uh hi so i opposed uh the proposed changes to the bylaw and i thought and i still think that the whole affair was a tremendous waste of time at a critical juncture that it failed predictably uh, that we could have had all of that energy and effort go into uh, trying to improve KPFA's programming, trying to build up membership, um, trying to make a case for the kinds of grants the station needs to survive. Thank you, Thomas. Pete Ferrugio, you have 30 seconds. Yes, uh, I'm glad the caller proposed that question because uh, I and the rest of Rescue Pacifica oppose the uh, uh, attempt to take away the oversight powers from the local station boards. That's what those uh, bylaw changes attempted to do. And I think it's ironic that the members of KPFA protectors who were the New Day Pacifica people constantly blame the national board because uh, about a year ago, they lost their majority on the national board. While they had the majority on the national board, they created a lot Thank of the you. debt problems for Pacifica. Thank you, Pete. Donna Carter, you have 30 seconds. Uh, I oppose the bylaws change. Uh, I felt it limited the membership from uh, participating in dis uh, decision making. Uh, I think it was a lot of waste of time and uh, I hope it won't happen again. 
Thank you, Donna. Elizabeth Milos, you have 30 seconds. Yes, I opposed it, uh, completely opposed it. And in fact, um, a lot of the untruths are being said here regarding um, what would actually happen. The listener station board oversight would definitely have been lost under the, new, under the proposition. Uh, and also um, the, it would be an unelected member. So they're calling this present uh, Pacifica National Board undemocratic. Well, actually, in fact, one of the arguments that they are making is that the uh, the ones who won, the listeners supposedly, uh, should be counted when under their new laws, three quarters, they would need a three Thank quarters you. majority vote in order to be Thank able you. to pass any changes. So they're being hypocritical. Zach Kaldvir, you have no, 30 seconds. I'm, I'm part of the KPFA protectors and I'm, I'm kind of stunned with all this talk about uh, democracy when the bylaws passed by 1400 votes among listeners and the only reason a small majority of staff uh, rejected it was because WBAI added almost like 62 members in the last year. And so the idea that you know 70 members of the staff should override 1400 listeners who also Thanks, support Sarah. democracy now and Mitch Jesuit show Thank you. in surveys, that's democracy. Don McClay, you have 30 seconds. Hi, um, it's a complicated subject. I voted no on the bylaws because I just felt the process was bad. And I agree with what people have said about it kind of giving the winners uh, instant win that goes beyond what they just claimed they were talking about. Um, and I'm disappointed with them for having brought what I felt was an unethical process forward twice. Uh, that said, they have every right to run in the current structure. Right, everybody does. Thank you, Don. Adisa Armand, you have 30 seconds. As part of the uh, Rescue Pacifica slate, board slate, I, I am encouraged by uh, the fact that our slate uh, says that the listeners should be a part of that. Um, I, I'm not involved very heavily in the nuances of, of what's going on between the two parties, but I, 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 I must say that it's important for us. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, thank you. Rich Stone, you have 30 seconds. Yes, as a... Uh, as you know, like I said, as a recent uh, you know, cab member and uh, a member of the Pacifica Slate, uh, I experienced uh, that, uh, you know, these uh, bylaw changes, and I, and I was definitely against them, uh, you know, both times. And uh, you just just need to bring uh, more accountability to the, you know, and, uh, and attention to the, the, the bylaws that, that, that are currently in, in, in place. And, and plus, you know, the... The, the elimination of shows like Guns and Butters Thank and you, Twit Radio without any explanation to the people who did the show also speaks volumes uh, uh, aside from all the other points. Amber, have thank, you. thank you. Thank yeah. you. Amber Gianti, you have 30 yeah. seconds. Great. I oppose the bylaws change. I think a lot of really good comments have been made by the Rescue Pacific Coalition. I am in support of the Rescue Pacific Coalition. Vote our coalition in. We need this this board desperately for oversight. Thank you. Thank you, Amber Jayanti. James McFadden, you have 30 seconds. Um, <clears throat> I was against both of the costly bylaws referendums, which attempted to place control of Pacific in the hands of a minority faction. Please see my counterpunch article, you know. Uh, Google Counterpunch and James McFadden, which describes the action of the faction, which now calls themselves KPFA protectors, before judging whether they merited your trust with that kind of bylaws change. Thank you, James. Vicente Cruz, you have 30 seconds. I did not like or trust uh, the New Day bylaws, and I did pose against it uh, for piggyback on the same reasons of everything that Don McClay said. What also hasn't been mentioned here is that the disparity in votes was only because it was spent so much money to send mailers out as people are overwhelmed and it's hard to get people interested in elections because they're trying to just make ends meet. So they just go with what comes in their mail and uh, 
most people didn't have that kind of money to promote the New Day Bible. Thank you. Thank you, Vicente. We're going to move on to caller three. Um, Harry from San Francisco, you are live on KPFA. What is your question? Yes, I have to say I'm totally confused about the financial situation, but I did want to know, although I understand, you know, that this board does not have jurisdiction over that, I would like to know who is in favor of selling any station, including KPF, including WBAI, and uh, why, if, if they have time to answer that. Just yes or no, do you, or are, you, are you interested in, in – would you – approve of selling WBAI or another station to uh, generate funds for Pacifica, or would you be totally against that? Thank you. Fred Cook, you have 30 seconds. I am uh, opposed to selling any of the licenses or stations. I am open to reducing the budgets of the local stations for staff to the amount that they are raising uh, locally so that uh, we stop uh, siphoning money out of other stations that are in fact meeting their obligations. Thank you. Fred Dodsworth, you have 30 seconds. I am adamantly opposed to selling any assets of the Pacifica network, whether they are intellectual or physical. I think that it is critical that we actually create budgets and that stations maintain their budgets and the budget should be based upon their subscriber bases. And I think that this is critical. And if we don't do this, we're going to lose the stations, all of them. Thank you. Thomas Lord, you have 30 seconds. I'll join the choir. Uh, it's ridiculous to sell any of our licenses, any of our stations. Um, it's ridiculous to go into austerity mode because we will rapidly spiral to the ground, losing members if we even survive past the immediate crisis with the loan. Um, uh, don't have much to add to that. Losing the mother station, losing the gorgeous asset and very practical productive asset that is KPFA, even if we were to try and lease it back is a terrible idea. Uh, BAI transmitter, same thing. Thank you. Thank you. Pete Ferrugio, you have 30 seconds. Yes, uh, adamantly opposed uh, to selling off any assets. Uh, Pacifica Network needs to expand, not shrink. Uh, I, I have to say, I think it's ironic, again, uh, that uh, members of the KPFA protectors group, not here in the station, in the debate, were instrumental in physically shutting down WBAI in 2019. And so, you know, be, bear that in mind, uh, who, you're, who you're sleeping with. Uh, Thank so you. Far. Thank you. Donna Carter, you have 30 seconds. Uh, of, of course, I'm opposed to selling any of the stations. It's a big challenge to figure out how to uh, get the network to function more successfully and each station to function more successfully, but it's work that was, must be done. Thank you. Elizabeth Milos, you have 30 seconds. I am completely opposed to cannibalizing. I consider that cannibalizing our network by uh, trying to sell off or even shut down a station. And uh, also, um, I would also demand that all the members of the listener station board that are present. In fact, there is one member who's actual member of the listener station board who's not here at this moment, who has violated Article 7 as the duty of loyalty uh, and duty of care. Uh, by complete, by again, uh, put placing the lawsuit against Pacifica, appealing the, the case. Thank you. wanted to put it into receivership. Thank um, you. Zach Kaldvir, you have 30 seconds. Yeah, I'm, I'm, again, I'm, I'm stunned by the attacks that we had anything to do with shutting down WBI or anything of that nature. I, I'm running because I care so much about public radio and I want to do my best to keep KPFA alive and Pacifica alive. Uh, I think the worst thing that we can do is if we continue to mismanage the Pacifica network, uh, right-wing interests and Christian radio could take it over. And I think that would be uh, a crisis for democracy itself. So I just think we need to Thank you. run these stations better. To save Don McClay, you have 30 seconds. Hi, um, I'm also opposed to any sell-off. It 
to me, that brings up the question of what are we doing to help the other stations? If KPFA is doing better, if KPFA has a better website, KPFA has some better tools, we have some programming together, why aren't we helping the other stations be more successful? Um, that's what I think we should be doing, and that's where I think our sense of solidarity and building the network should be. Thank you. Adisa Armand, you have 30 seconds. Yes, I am firmly opposed to selling our licenses or our stations. I believe that, as I believe uh, it was Don who said, that we ought to be helping one another. And I'm thinking of a community quilt and where all of the pieces of the quilt fit in, 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 inside one another. And although they're different, they look wonderful because they are cooperating with one another. And so no, no, no selling of the licenses, never, never, Thank you. because we must work for KPFA for the rest of Pacifica. Rich Stone, you have 30 seconds. Yes, from what I remember when I work on the Community Advisory Board, WBAI actually was forced to uh, signed a, a, a bad lease when they when they lost their original transmitter due to the hurricane and uh, that in itself uh, you know, put them you know in, in, into the debt crisis and uh, and that which which in my opinion wasn't their fault to begin with so uh, yes I'm definitely uh, opposed to the sell and that I was really sad to see 1929 Martin Luther King go as well so yes I'm opposed to all selling of any K uh, thank you Pacifica or KPM Am or WBA Amber Gianti, Amber Gianti, you have 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah. We're a family. I look at us as a family, and I don't sell off members of my family. You know, and I think, uh, as Pete said, I think we need to expand rather than shrink. And uh, we may disagree, families disagree, but I think that we have at our disposal some really good communication skills. NVC, you know, we talk about it, we sell it on the air, and I think we need to use it in terms of our disagreements or the things that we don't see eye to eye on. We have the ability to work it out. Thank you. No sale. Thank you. James McFadden. I'm against selling any stations or licenses like everybody else. And um, budgets can be met with volunteers. 75% of the content of, of uh, Pacifica is volunteers. That could easily be 90% if needed. So we need better programming is the real key here to draw new listeners. And the Bay Area doesn't need another NPR station. We need to be more radical than that. Thank you. Thank you, Vicente Cruz. Uh, I am also against selling and want to have the same debate about the whether or not, uh, I, I believe KPFA should, we should all be pooling our resources together until each individual station could be sustainable. And how we do that is by listening to you, the members and the listeners, the people who aren't and getting new listeners and asking them, you know, well, what is it you wanna see? Because then they would uh, fund it and let's get everybody sustainable, thanks. Carlos Cohen. Thank you. Um, I think we are all in agreement here for the first time. We are all opposed to selling any of the stations I totally support Fred in what Fred said. The problem is that financially the network is sinking. I don't know how to say this any more clear. And even though they are not selling the station, they are selling the buildings. Already KPFT building is being sold and we are at risk of losing the buildings at KPFA. This is what has motivated me to join this um, um, uh, Thank election. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to Arian in SF. You are live on KPFA. What is your question? Thank you so much for all your efforts. KPFA is definitely not NPR and we do not want another NPR station. I wanna um, bring up a couple of points. So um, diversity is more than just diversity of ethnicity, it's diversity of viewpoint. And I was disappointed in the COVID crisis. It's all just one, um, fear mongering day after day, week after week, same old, same old. And I, I want us to understand that our number one public health emergency is the environmental crisis and climate disruption. I am wondering what the station is going to do 
to both address those problems, but also to envision and manifest change. What KPSA does so well is educate the public. What it does less well is envision and plan and manifest change. And we need to have more creativity and more time allotted in perhaps even each show about solutions. That's what I challenge you to do. And again, I appreciate all for one, one for all, everyone. Thank you so much for your efforts. Thank you. Fred Dodsworth? KPFA Fred, yeah. is a, a great asset and across the nation, it covers 60% of the listeners voting, voting listeners. The issue is that we are losing listeners every month and every station is. KPFA is the one station that actually has the most listeners, but the rest of the stations are plummeting and we need to change that. What Don said about offering additional benefits is clearly what needs to be done. And one of our benefits is our news programming. And we need to make sure that we educate and train journalists you. across the nation. Thomas Lord. Um, for diversity of viewpoint, I think it's really important that the station get better at bringing in citizen voices, the voices of activists out in the community, the voices of uh, organizations that most people have never heard of, uh, to find out where people actually are at and have them be represented on the air. It's not something we're gonna come up with in a back room, the right perspective. Um, I agree the station is not covering climate at all adequately. It's not uh, either critiquing the institutions that are failing to deal with these problems. Thank uh, you. Pete Ferrugio. Yes, I think I agree with some of the others who are saying uh, KPFA should be an organizing center, not just an informing center. And I'll just give you one quick example. In the past several years, there's been a really big fight in Oakland against uh, privatization and uh, of the schools and the takeover of our schools by the billionaires. And KPFA has not been present in covering any of these mass meetings. Uh, we need to use our apprentices to go out into the communities and meet people and bring Thank people you. into the station to produce programs together. Donna Carter. Uh, Donna Carter. Donna Carter. Hi. Uh, I like the caller's reference to climate change. Uh, climate change is an issue that everyone can get behind, the whole country. And KPFA could be a leader in that. We do do some coverage, but it's not adequate. We also know, need to know uh, about when people are getting out on the streets. And uh, occasionally I've heard, uh, but not recently, uh, people announce when people are going out on the streets on very on issues that people many people support. So um, I think we've got a lot more Thank you. work that we can do. Elizabeth Milos. Yes, definitely. I agree with most of the things that everybody here has said so far. Um, also, uh, you should look at not only a climate disruption, but a just transition. And what does a just transition look like? Uh, for example, the uh, very not very much coverage um, on KPFA, except for with flashpoints about the issues of Standing Rock and the communities of color who are affected. It's called environmental racism as well. And we don't get enough coverage of that either. And um, that has to do with the whole privatization scheme that uh, that we need more information about. Thank you. Zach Kaldvir. Yeah, so I would agree with Elizabeth there. Um, I mean, this is a major reason why I, I decided to do this. You know, my dad was an environmental science professor warning us every day since the 1980s about the climate crisis. And here we are, California is on fire, the world's on fire. And, you know, KPFA plays an incredibly important role uh, as an FCC emergency alert station. And I just can't imagine a better role that we need to play, uh, especially at a time where the worst is yet to come. And uh, I would love to be talking about this all the time because the corporate media certainly isn't. Thank you, Don McClay. Thank you. Um, well, talking about diversity, that was our first question from a woman. Um, one of the reasons I'm really kind of disappointed with the group that's now calling itself KPFA Protectors, and it's had about seven other names, is they hold the majority of the local board, 
and they don't brook any discussion. We have tried to raise these issues at the board. And I think one of the things you need to do is vote for different board members. There's question time at the board for the public at large. And you can also approach the, uh, the programs directly. Let them know what you think. Thanks for raising the issue. Thank you. Thank you. Adisa Arbant. Thank you. I agree that um, <clears throat> climate change and so many other uh, topical interests should be on our KPFA network. And, and Elizabeth brought in something that really touched my, my soul, and that is that we're, we don't have an opportunity to not only talk about uh, climate change, but structural racism, and we need to to have people who are are, are Thank you. oh I'm so sorry. <laughs> Rich so Stone. <laughs> yeah, hi, uh, when yes, when it comes to diversity program that definitely should uh, you know you know entail uh, and especially the the youth uh, you know especially with the within their apprentice program and maybe even out uh, outside of the station to uh, do more outreach to environmental and uh, you know uh, and uh, you know you know like they said structural like I just said a structural racism and uh, even uh, your homeless uh, you know, issues and uh, to have more direct outreach to the public I mean to to the, to the public uh, and uh, thank you to have more of a discussion at uh, at uh, local station boards and maybe cab a meetings as well Amber Gianti. Yeah. Yeah, it's great suggestions. Uh, I would also like to see, and maybe it's a little off topic, I'd like to see a listener call-in show on these topics. And I would also like to see a, a woman on the street or a man on the street doing coverage, walking up to people and asking what they think, what they're feeling about what is going on in the world. And climate change is the top of the list, homelessness, you know, many other things. But I'd like to see more interaction with the community direct interaction with the community. Thank you. James McFadden. Um, I've been uh, following climate change uh, since I was in graduate school 40 years ago. And this is existential. And I think it's really imperative for the local station board to put pressure on uh, the general manager to uh, have programming that really addresses this. And the only way to do that is to bring back the programming council. And in addition to the climate change, I think we really need an anti-war, anti-empire uh, uh, slant for our news and, uh, and not just some NPR light version. Thank you. Vicente Cruz. Uh, yes, reminder, we don't know how people actually identify, but it is true that we often on the station and mostly only talk about the problems without solutions. And then when it is actually solutions, they just tell us to organize and not really, again, a definition of what that means. Uh, I really would love to see a call-in show and I would see programs that actually said, well, and how I would personally say it too, is hollering at the current elected fools isn't gonna do it until we elect people before profit candidates. We won't get anything done and KPFA should be that mouthpiece. Thank you. That done. Carlos Cohen. Oh, yes, I just unmuted myself. Well, I think this is a second topic where we are all in agreement. We all want more analysis and, and, and progressive analysis of climate crisis. There is some, there is work, rude awakening up front. They brought this, but we need, I agree, we need more. We don't need to be like NPR. But I'm shocked. I'm shocked at the level of attack against KPFA protectors. You guys don't know me. You don't know Fred. You don't know Zach. And we've been called corporate, hypocritical, gatekeepers, chaos creator. Thank you. This is the dysfunction. This has to stop. Thank you. A brief second for the station ID. You are listening to KPFA's Listener Candidate Forum, 94.1 KPFA Berkeley, 89.3 KPFB Berkeley, 88.1 KFCF Fresno, and online at kpfa.org. Fred Cook, you have 30 seconds. So one of the things that's being censored is the development of treatment using existing medications to prevent people getting sick with COVID and to help people get well from COVID. 
that's being censored now. Yeah. If we have the Sunrise Movement calling in from the streets, reporting what young people are doing, that can flow into our programming and inform more about the climate crisis. Thank you. So right now, do we have anybody on the line? Otherwise, we're going to move on to a question that was submitted online. What are your concrete ideas for building membership? And if any, what successful practice have you had in doing so? And we will start this time with Thomas Lord. Hi. Um, an interesting fact that many people don't seem to recognize is that among the primary missions uh, of the Pacifica Network and of KPFA uh, is the cultural, is the promotion of local culture, the development of local culture, uh, featuring up and coming artists, uh, encouraging uh, skilled amateurs to learn. Uh, the mission statement even encourages writing contests of all things. Um, none of these are visible any longer in KPFA programming. I see those as excellent ways to attract a new audience. Thank you, Thomas Lord. Pete Ferrugio, you have 30 seconds. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, the most important thing we could and should be doing is uh, involving uh, local communities, uh, people out there uh, in you know, different parts of the Bay Area in uh, having programs that represent their direct interest uh, if they're involved in some kind of struggle, especially. Um, my only experience in this area is not programming, but would be union and community organizing, where if you present important- Thank you, things, Pete Ferrugio. Donna Carter. Donna Carter. Uh, my primary experience is in union organizing. Uh, and I think that that leads me to believe that we need to go to community events, have tables, uh, do a lot more outreach on a one-to-one -one basis. Thank you, Donna Carter, Elizabeth Milos. Yes, my experience is also in union organizing as well as community organizing um, from a very young age um, and, and also in human rights work. And so in doing that, um, I have vast experience in, in, in getting people together and organized in order to for a specific goal. Um, one of the main things that I think we need to do is to uh, bring trust into the process. We need a program council, we need a finance committee, we need uh, reports and we need accountability. And accountability means actually getting uh, the general manager to answer specific Thank questions. You, Elizabeth Milos. Milos. Zach Caldevere. Yeah, so I mean, I've spent my life uh, as an advocate for progressive causes. I think in doing so, I have definitely uh, inspired and helped motivate uh, people of all kinds to take up the cause. I think young people, not to sound cliche, are our future whether it's the Sunrise Movement, whether it's Black Lives Matter, whether it's the anti-gun uh, movement, uh, I think we need to go to them, to reach out to them, get into the streets and listen to them Thank and you. bring them into our station. Thank you, Zach Caldevere, Don McClay. I feel that the first step is to decide to do it. We're running for the board, not some emotional state. And as board members, and I've been a board member, we need to sit down and discuss this issue, decide what our policy is going to be, decide what kind of activities we're going to take, uh, and what resources we're going to devote to outreach. I can think of some options. Uh, there's YR Media, there's Laney College, there's uh, Berkeley High, but let's let the young people tell us what kind of new programs they want, not tell them. Thanks. Thanks, Don McClay. Adisa Armand. Thank you, Don. It was so good to, to follow you. I really, truly believe that it's important to do community one-on-ones. And if, if we start by thinking that we as the board can do that and we trust one another, I keep on hearing a lot of mistrust, that then the possibility exists 
for us to go forward in a unique way. And I'm going to go back to my idea about that community quilt because quilts keep everyone together. And, and, and so one of the things I would like Thank to you. for our youth to be more involved in the program. Thank you, Adisa. Today. You're welcome. Thank you, Adisa Armand. Rich Stone. Yeah, hi. Am I unmuted? Okay. Uh, yes, we can hear you. Yes, uh, uh, outreach work with uh, with with the yeah you know, with the San Francisco Green Party Labor Council. Am I unmuted? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me. You know, I'll start again. I uh, have done uh, you know a, a good amount of uh, outreach work with the with the with the Labor Council, the San Francisco Green Party, and with the uh, Community uh, Advisory Board, and I and uh, I believe that. Uh, uh, you know, we're through the local station board uh, that uh, yeah, that's that we must learn to you know, you know move forward. Thank you. In terms of uh, you know, doing thank you, it, Rich Stone. With all the other uh, issues that we spoke of, uh, you know, previously in other outreach. Amber Gianti. Wow. You're muted. <laughs> Wonderful. I thought I unmuted. Anyway, I say visibility versus invisibility. We need to become visible, a visible presence in the community. We are an important part of this community. There are a lot of people that resonate with us. You know, I talk to people about the station. They don't even know about the station. They don't even know we exist. Anyway, um, and I think that I, I want to see personally some of the shows that are du duplicated, you know, to get out of there and to bring in new shows that really represent you know, what the people want to hear. That's all. We need this pro new programming. Council. Thank you, Amber Gianti. Thank you. James McFadden. A member, uh, KPFA member recently told me that uh, Bay Area already has two NPRs. Uh, why is KPFA trying to be a third? I agree with Don McClay that um, we need to track younger, diverse generation that, that may not have access to uh, KPFA content the way they have has in the past. We need to have other ways to access content through podcasts and video and create content issues so that younger, uh, uh, younger adults become the next generation of, of listeners for radical programming. Thank you, James McFadden, Vicente Cruz. Uh, yes. I, uh, agree with Don and James as well, and how we would do that is, and especially where I feel we're gonna be in this uh, pandemic the same way for the next two years, having social distance events with things that are trending such as comedy shows or even movie nights um, that would attract me and listening to young people as well. My experience with that is, you know, through the Oakland Greens event coordinator where we were, were able to be, uh, all of our events are sustainable and we did the first one within one year the second one within two, and the third one within three. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vicente Cruz. So I want to remind everybody that you're listening to KPFA's Lister Candidate Forum, and you can call in to 510-848-4425 um, with any of your questions or comments to the candidates. And if we don't have anybody else online right now, I have another question. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I think I didn't have a chance to speak. Same here. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Nor did I. As I Let's recall. see. I'm sorry. I lost. I lost. Uh... Oh, yeah, right. of course. I'm, I'm sorry. I have like a lot of. <laughs> anyway, we're reminding everybody to call in. Um, so, Carlos, you're correct. You are the next person. Carlos Cohen, please. Thank you. Thank you, Rene. No problem. Uh, I think we drift, drifted away. The original question was regarding how do we raise man, money? And I think personally, and I think the KPFA protectors uh, agree, one of the main functions of a, a, a local station board is to reach out to the community and precisely look for ways to raise more money. Personally, I think that we should engage all the progressive nonprofit organizations out there try to bring their voices into the radio, try to engage with them. Personally, I wrote a five page document two years ago with ideas to raise money. And that's one of the reasons I'm running for the board. And I, I, I know the KPFA protectors agree with this 
tremendous need to go out to the community and raise money. Thank you. Thank you, Carlos Cohen. We have next Fred Cook. Wait. Am I lost? Did I get lost again? Yes. No, no that's Fred correct. Fred Cook. OK. Uh, we have the possibility of getting the program council going. We have the possibility of having a community advisory board, both of which can hold public meetings. They could be outdoor socially distanced meetings. We could do it immediately. This gives people who are in various communities, maybe they're not even listeners yet, but they are people we need. They're part of our service area. We need to hear from them. We also can work with existing organizations, unions, churches, community-based organizations to co cooperate with them to build listenership among their members. And if they- Thank you, Fred. People, Thank you, Fred Cook. become programmers as well, over. Fred Dodsworth. KPFA was founded in the middle of World War II, which was 80 years ago. It was founded on a new medium of the time, which was radio. Radio is not the major voice, the major way that people listen to things these days. And the fact that we are in the 21st century and we are ignoring all these other technologies really, really speaks to the antiquated ideas that we have. We need to adopt podcasts. We need to adopt Zooms. We need to adopt social media. We need to even do television. There are tons of community television stations that will run our shows if we give them product. And we have a full studio to use to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Fred Dodsworth. We have Red from Oakland. You are live on KPFA. What is your question? First, I want to thank you all for taking the time uh, to do this and uh, to commit to uh, running our uh, station. Uh, I would like the candidates to speak to uh, the removal of Twitwit Radio and Guns and Butter. Thank you. Pete Ferrugio. Yeah, uh, I oppose both of those removals, but more importantly, I oppose the process by which the general manager and I guess the program director had no accountability. They just willy nilly decided they're going to remove programs. They also removed uh, Workweek Radio, uh, the only, you know, radio based labor uh, centered program, which is now running on an alternative, alternative uh, station. And um, they refuse to put COVID race and democracy uh, on uh, the air. Thank you. Is on all the other stations. Thank you, Pete Ferrugio. Donna Carter. Um, I am not really too familiar with those programs. I think I did, I did listen to Guns and Butter a few times. Uh, I guess it's the process and uh, communication between the program uh, providers and the station manager and the LSB, that would uh, be a more um, appropriate way to parse out some of the issues. Thank you, Donna Carter. Elizabeth Milos. Yes, um, I'd like to say again that we need a program council, uh, but also 70% of the content is created by unpaid staff and Workweek Radio was one of the only labor channel, uh, labor, labor program, which is only one half hour, was only one half hour per week labor, okay? Um, and also we, we desperately need to, um, to have some, I'm sorry, I'm, I lost my train of thought, but go ahead. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Elizabeth Milos. Zach Kaldvir. Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I don't know all the details about its ratings, but I do know that uh, Guns and Butter had a, a lot of issues. Uh, they ran a lot of uh, on air conspiracy theories, including a segment on Holocaust denials. And without listener support, I don't have a problem with the show being uh, canceled. And I also just while I have a couple seconds, I want to just say I have been endorsed by Norman Solomon, Jeff Cohen, and Sonali Kohatkar. And I have an op-ed and counterpunch, as someone else has Thank mentioned you. many times. Zach Caldvere, 
counterpunch, and you'll see. Thank you, Zach Calvert. All the details. Thanks. Don McClay. I don't remember it ever coming up before the board or anyone ever telling us it came up before the board. Not any accusations against the show. If we're accusing it of supporting conspiracy theories, that was never formally brought to our attention. And the process by which this is done, lacking a program committee and the check and balance, has also not been brought up for discussion. And I think it should. I don't think we should look at one show or another show. I think we should look at the process by which things are done. Thank you. Adisa Armand? Yes, I'm not aware of the controversy regarding guns and butter, but I can share with you that uh, I believe that it's important for a host and the programs and the list, listener station wards and everyone to be involved in how that program is, uh, is faring. And there needs to be uh, an accountability for the program, the person who's performing the program and those who are listening uh, on the board to say, this is not working well. How do you think we can make it better? That's exactly what I think. Thank you. Thank you, Adi Saranmand. Rich Stone? Yes, uh, <clears throat> I do believe that that that, uh, that, uh, that it was very undemocratic the way they got rid of Guns and Butter and Twitwit and uh, Work Week Radio. And as for Guns and Butter, I was the cab moderator of the timekeepers, timekeeper for the 90 plus speakers that actually spoke on behalf as to why this uh, democratic process didn't occur. So yes, there were 90 plus and uh, of the 90 plus that spoke, only two spoke uh, for the elimination of guns and butter. And, and two of those were uh, you know, KPFA you. Uh, you know, staff members. So yes, the listeners were very concerned Rich. about it and three or four said that they would actually cut off their membership as a result of it, so yes. Thank you, Rich Stone. Amber Gianti? Yeah, I'm in favor of dialogues, not monologues. And uh, I think that we need to have conversations about these things. It's very important. And bring our listeners in. I mean, this is who we're representing. We want to hear what they, they, what they want. Thank you. Very disconcerting. That thank you. What happens. Yeah. Amber Gianti? Thank you, Am Amber. Thank James you. McFadden? I oppose the method uh, these shows were removed. Um, this is the reason we need to bring back a program council with a voice. Yeah. I think this was an example of top-down corporate structure without <laughs> listener input. And it's a problem right now with the general manager being protected by uh, uh, the current uh, majority on the local station board. And we need to change that. I'm not against removing shows per se, but we definitely need a a uh, process that includes the public. Thank you, James McFadden. Vicente Cruz? Uh, yes, I also disagree with the process of how it was removed. Um, and also, personally, that Twitwit Radio was an incredible, radical, artistic show um, that mixed humor and social justice. And if you liked SF Mind Troop, you would have loved Twitwit. And full transparency, actually, my theater career started in San Francisco with George Coates' performance works. Um, and George did some great work, not just with the Twitwit. Uh, so, yes, I oppose the process. And actually, we should get that back on. Thank you. Thank you. Vicente Cruz, Carlos Cohen. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, I agree. I think it with Don McLeay, he said process is important and we cannot keep programs or remove programs because some of us like them or not. This has to do with ratings, surveys, going out to the community and understanding. So I think, as I understand, some of these programs that were removed, they had very low ratings, very low listenership. I also understand that um, Guns and Butter uh, Thank you. interview conspiracy theories. I think you said 45 seconds, Rene. Next question. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fred Cook. Thank you. I agree that the process was unacceptable. We need a program council. We need clear criteria that include the kinds of things that Carlos was talking about. Beyond that, 
it's important that we have room to fundamentally disagree. And I think there has to be a way of framing it in the program, but we need to be able to listen to people who are saying things that we think are totally wrong. Not Thank that you, Fred Cook. It's the Fred air, but Dodsworth? there has to be room. Hi, I'm the only person here who's actually been a managing editor and executive editor and a reporter. I've sat in editorial meetings and I have to tell you straight up that these decisions can't be made by a local council. They have to be made by a program director. If we don't like the program director, we have the right to force the program director out or force the manager out. And I wanna stop hearing these criticisms about how this one group supposedly is protecting the, the general manager. This is not productive. If you've got, a, you've got an issue, then let's figure out how to get this better. Thank you, Fred Dodsworth. Thomas Lord. Uh, the failure of process that everyone is talking about falls directly to uh, the KPFA protector faction that dominates the board. It is the assigned duty of the board in the bylaws to have ongoing monitoring and oversight of these kinds of decisions and how they are made. It's the job of the board. Um, so it's disappointing it didn't happen. Uh, I, I think it's worth noting Guns and Butter is said to have, I don't personally know, broadcast some things that absolutely do not should not be unsafe to broadcast. Um, and that was probably an appropriate decision. Thank and you. Wait, wait, well, it's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas Lord. We have Mary from San Francisco. You are live on KPFA. What is your question? Thank you. I'm 70 years old, disabled, differently abled female. And what I'd like to find out is why there is no uh, good public affairs programming right now on cannabis, because there's such an intersection between veterans, seniors, disabled, people working with chronic illness, the signal area, Northern and Central California, this is basically the number one cash crop. This is employing people in growing, manufacturing, distributing, dispensing, adding revenue, some very exciting election candidates are speaking up and legislation on legalization. So I would like to see something and also more call and more interactivity, the Pushing Limits program, the women's magazine. I'd like more veteran friendly programming, more senior friendly programming, more where it's safe to talk about Jacqueline McGowan running in the recall election. She's a Democrat. She's a cannabis policy advocate who really gets California. So there seems to be a block out or a censorship. And I'd like to open it up on this very fascinating intersectional subject. So what do you have to say on the subject of this? Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Donna Carter, you have 45 seconds. Okay. Uh, the subject cannabis. Um, at one point, it was uh, a banned illegal substance. It still is in some places. In California, I believe it has become primarily a commercial issue. And uh, although I don't think there's anything wrong, anything wrong having some discussion of cannabis somewhere on the uh, station, uh, I don't believe that we take on business interests per se. Thank you. Thank you, Donna Carter. Elizabeth Milos. Yes, hi. Um, I am very aware that we, we are lacking in much more uh, information regarding cannabis. Um, I also would like to say that um, that programming also means how far we can reach. And I'd like to commend one of the, the one of the people, Tom Voorhees, who's a member of the LSB and also a representative of the PNB who extended the uh, antenna reach by putting the Monterey antenna, which extended uh, the reach to Monterey County, which uh, also provides a more interest in listenership. Um, and cannabis, as you can, as you all know, is something that is very, uh, very well received among our California um, listeners. So yes, I would like to put in a plug for Tom Voorhees as well. Thank you, Elizabeth Milos, Zach Kaldvir. Yeah, well, I think, I mean, the benefits of 
cannabis and the, the threat they pose to the pharmaceutical industry and the alcohol industry is pretty well known at this point. But I also think hemp offers an extraordinary uh, opportunity, uh, whether it, it's paper, paper and all, all the, the, the chemical processes that we could avoid uh, by doing this, including clothes. Uh, I, I mean, this, I think, is a subject really worth talking about more. I think hemp is largely ignored. Uh, yeah, and so I, I, I would love to see that more discussed. Thank you, Zach Caldvier. Don McClay. It seems that some of these subjects kind of loop around and connect to one another. And Mary, my first thought when I heard you say you want to talk about cannabis was I asked myself, do we have a regular show on health? And I think Fred Dodsworth was making a good point that, you know, managers need to manage, but not without accountability. And a check and balance system could be established by which a program council, it could be a committee of the board, uh, would receive explanations. I would like to know why those programs were canceled. And if there's accusations against them, they should be provided in writing. I would also like to have a feedback loop by which we could say, hey, do we have a show on health? What are we doing for labor? What's our local news? And that's all process. And I think that's where we're closing the circle. Thank, Don, thank you, Don McClay. Adisa Armand. Thank you. Um, I, I wanted to share that there used to be, or oh, there was, a program on health by an Africa, African American doctor whose name I can't remember, call at the moment. But I think that we need more programs like that. It was informative, it, it was. Uh, it had humor, and it also gave the, the, the people uh, opportunities to call in a, about uh, recommendations, and the doctor gave that to them. And, and so here again, I agree that process is part and parcel of what we need to do. We need to, <laughs> what, what we need to do is to sit down together and, and, and talk about what our main concern is. Our main concern, at least I Thank believe, you. is KPFA and, and the, the existence of the- Thank you, Adisa Armand. I'm sorry, yeah, I'll go again. <laughs> Rich Stone. Uh, yes, I uh, believe that it's uh, high time, uh, pun and no pun intended, uh, that we have uh, more discussion. <laughs> Uh, on on this topic and uh, of, the, you know, of cannabis and that you know you know perhaps even uh, uh, you know you know you have the you know the good qualities of hemp as you know, as, as well and uh, this can be you know, brought forth through the you know you know through the programming council and uh, and to be a continuing uh, you know effort of uh, you know what you know the community advisory board has has done and uh, and you know as a member you know, of the local station board I would also. You know, make sure that uh, community uh, you know, that it would be discussed at uh, meetings and uh, you know, you know, as well as uh, programming council meetings. Thank you. Thank you, Rich Stone, Amber Gianti. Yeah, um, there is a program. There's a show called The Herbal Highway, uh, but they don't talk about hemp or uh, you know they talk about herbs, even though hemp, excuse me, uh, marijuana, cannabis is an herb. Most interesting. I've always fast been fascinated with that. We are an alternative station, and I we have people listening with alternative lifestyles or people that might be interested in doing things differently, and I think that we need to offer these kinds of shows. Um, also, I want to mention uh, the use of ketamine. Uh, ketamine is a very viable, um, it's been, been, been proven to be very viable with, uh, with the use of PTSD and uh, long-term depression and other kinds of things, and I think that these are very important um, you know, topics to offer to the community. Uh, thank you, Amber thank Jayanti. Thank you. Thank you. James McFadden. Yes, uh, cannabis, uh, interesting subject. Uh, this could be a draw for a younger audience. But in fact, I think we need a dialogue on drugs and the war on drugs. And this needs to be uh, uh, more prominent on KPFA. The war on drugs was used to go after youth in the 1960s and 70s, and people of color, especially in the, 70, in the 80s and 90s, 
and to create a prison industrial complex. So I think we need open dialogue on drugs, addiction, and whether this drug should be criminalized or whether they should be handled just as a health problem. Thank you, James McFadden. Vicente Cruz. Yeah, just riding Don McClay and James McFadden wave on that. As uh, someone who broke his back in 2000, broke their back in 2002 uh, and traded cannabis for opioids, uh, I would love to see that subject uh, come up more often. And we'll still piggyback again and think that it does lead to a conversation about uh, the war on drugs, uh, why it is, what other drugs. I will also give a little bit of props because not only do we have health programs already that we could uh, nudge in that direction, but uh, we also have at least, mostly during fun drives, uh, they talk about uh, microdosing with a fungus, with mushrooms and things too. So it, it does come up a little bit, but definitely uh, we can do more and do better, thanks. Thank you, Vicente Cruz. Carlos Cohan. Uh, thank you. Um, well, going back to the original question, yes, I, I would agree, not only on a show uh, related or to the topic of cannabis, but like somebody said, the health issues in general, I agree with James McFadden that we should expand it to the war on drugs. I totally agree that we should have a very critical eye on that. But I'm going back to what Don said. It's an issue of process. And I'm going back to what Fred said. It's an issue about an editor and a program director. So to me, the programming has to be done by the editor and the program director. And the, the LSB can have a subcommittee. And they, yes, they should be accountable. But this, the subcommittee is to uh, the- um, Thank you, Carlos. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Carlos Cohen. Fred Cook. Do you hear me? You're muted. Yes. All right. Uh, cannabis is business. And as business, it has labor relations. So that's a whole nother angle that needs to be brought in. And our process for bringing in topics into our programming, whether it's in a health show or a labor show, we need to get that process worked out better. I, I agree that having a professional program director is a great idea, but that person needs to be accountable and there need to be committees and community outreach that get us related to our audience and our potential audience. So- Thank you, Fred Cook. Fred Dodsworth. One of the problems is that this is a radio media. Radio media lives on time slots and we have 60 minutes in an hour. We have three hours of drive time in the morning, three hours of drive time in the afternoon. It's 180 minutes each. And we have hundreds and hundreds of people who want their programs put on the air. This is a problem that can, can resolve by being a 21st century media company. We need podcasts, we need online web stuff, but we can't put cannabis in a drive time slot just because somebody wants it. We need to have a program director that looks at building audiences and building membership. And we should run all these things, but we need to run them on podcasts. We need to run them on the website. We need to do television. Thank you. Thank you, Fred Dodsworth. Thomas Lord. Uh, I heard Mary say something that we've all overlooked. We've been falling all, all over each other to talk about bringing in younger listeners, new demographics that way. Um, the call for senior friendly programming is very important. I think we used to have more of it than we do. Uh, some spitballing ideas. Uh, what about cross-generational dialogue about politics, about uh, opportunities for activism um, and and certainly to get senior voices on the air and that viewpoint as well. I think that's a great idea. Drugs, counterculture, uh, the politics of it. Yep, more coverage of that. How about a countercultural program that has entertainment and excitement in that way, but also has segments of that very serious kind of news and analysis that people are talking about. Um, we need more of a balance. It's not just an all talk, all news radio Thank you. station. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Thomas Lord. Pete Ferrugio. Yeah, the doctor who had an excellent show for years uh, was uh, Dr. Michael Lenoir from Oakland. Uh, he was my wife's allergist, and his was an excellent example of uh, what what should happen and expand throughout uh, KPFA. Uh, he educated, he had people call in and took on various topics. Um, so the cannabis thing, you'd think uh, a station in the middle of the Bay Area would have more coverage of health related stuff related to cannabis. Um, but, and I agree with uh, Fred Dodsworth when he says we've got to expand that kind of uh, focus throughout uh, various media. Um, so um, I think that would pull a lot more people in if we could do more health or oriented coverage. Thank you. Thank you, Pete Ferrugio. We'll now take Janet from Oakland. You are live on, on KPFA. What is your question? Yes, hi. Um, the local station boards and PNB Pacific and National Board meetings are run using Robert's Rules of Order. And one of the reasons dissenting opinions are shut down at, at the KPFA local station board meetings is because Robert's Rules are manipulated much of the time. It's one thing to run as a candidate for the local station board. It's another to be elected and then participate in LSB meetings. Uh, so I, I'm asking, uh, do the candidates have a copy of Robert's Rules of Order? Uh, the latest edition is the 12th edition. And what is their experience participating in meetings using Robert's Rules of Order? And one other thing, um, the KPFA local station board does not allow its meetings to be videoed. And I wanted to know what the candidates think about that. Thank you, Janet. Elizabeth Milos. Yes, I'm familiar with Robert's Rules, although I'm not an expert at it. I'm, I'm a union member and uh, I've been to uh, uh, delegate to uh, the con National Convention of CWA twice and delegate to the con my union's convention as well, uh, UPTI. And um, I basically, uh, I've, I'm very familiar with Robert's Rules. And I also am very familiar with the manipulation of, of Robert's Rules as well. And so, yeah, I'm definitely aware of that. And um, the other thing is, yes, I would be totally in favor of having the local station board uh, meetings videotaped and archived right now. The KPIX, I'm sorry, the K, KPIX um, website, I've noticed that all the other uh, stations have finance committee recordings, um, uh, program council recordings, um, monthly recordings. KPFE doesn't. I'm, I'm wondering when. I mean, it doesn't. Thank you, Elizabeth. Two. My one year. Zach Kaldvir. Yeah, so I'm going to have to plead uh, ignorance on Robert's rules of order. I am, am not. I'm not familiar with that. I, I look forward, if elected, to dive in to all this kind of nuance and detail. Um, as far as I always think sunlight is the greatest disinfectant. So just to have every, everything videoed and, you know, for people to, to see, I I'm always supportive of that unless, unless I find out something different if elected. But uh, yeah, I think, I think that's all I can say right now based on what I know. Thank you, Zach Kaltvier, Don McClay. God, I've been in a lot of meetings where people have used Robert's Rules of Order to kind of keep other people from talking or trip them up and stuff like that. And, you know, you have to have some kind of rules. Um, I, I would hardly want to know which edition is current. I, I'm not in love with it at that level. Um, but there's also other things that you have to pay attention to uh, when you're a board member. Um, we don't fall under the Brown Act. I thought we did at one point, but we don't. Uh, that's for boards that are of governmental uh, persuasion, if you wish. And there are other rules that apply to being trustees of a nonprofit, which I think KPFA is a nonprofit technically. Uh, we gotta obey the law. Thank you. Don McClay, Adi Saramond. 
Yes, I'm very familiar, not very, I am familiar with Robert's Rules of Order. And I think that it can be used in a very positive and negative way as has been expressed before. I think that it's, um, I believe the purpose of the Robert's Rules of Order is to, to produce order as the word is, is implied in the title. And sometimes, um, sometimes board meetings can become very chaotic and um, reference to rule and quotations can help to um, alleviate some problems, not all the time, because there are people who will over, over speak on those issues, but definitely there has to be some sense of thank you within an organization's meetings. And I do look forward to having- Thank you. Thank you, Adisa Armand, Rich Stone. Yes, I'm familiar with uh, Robert's rules as a member of Labor Council, you know, specifically with the manipulation of them, but with the, even currently with the social justice issue of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict that uh, that uh, that Elizabeth uh, you know, Milos and uh, and I you know, partake in. So yes, I'm I'm at least vaguely familiar, if if not more so. And also, when it comes to video and at meetings, I'll I'll, I'll refer back to the the guns and butter meeting where where they uh, first uh, in in my memory actually uh, you know uh, implemented uh, that or tried to implement that policy I uh, but you know, stuff was personally against it and uh, and by principle I, I thought it was perfectly fine you know you know, for people you know, you know, you know to do it I d don't understand uh, you know what you know what the problem is and to this day I thank still you Richard really don't. thank you thank you Rich Stone Amber Jayanti uh, I'm familiar with Robert's rules. I was on a grand jury uh, and actually uh, quit the grand jury because of Robert's rules. <laughs> because of what was going on, all the blockages that were happening. But I was on there for quite some time. Uh, and I definitely think that, you know, videoing is great. People need the visuals. People are not just into listening or reading. And I think it would be a great change. Thank you. Thank you, Amber Jayanti. James McFadden. Uh, Robert's rules were invented uh, more than 150 years ago by uh, an army officer, and they were, you know, designed to maintain a power structure. And really, they're not suitable for a lot of uh, situations. You know, uh, they were tried to be used when I was a facilitator for Move to Amend, and we we prevented that from happening. I think we would be much better off going to something that doesn't require years of study. If you've looked at a book, so Robert Rules, it's really quite complex. Um, I have a copy, I've looked through it, but uh, I favor going to a, a set of more, much less, much simpler rules, which can be work fine with people as long as they learn to uh, behave. Thank you, James McFadden, Vicente Cruz. Uh, yes, I am familiar with Robert's rules of order back when I was with direct action to stop war. I also have seen it be abused um, often at other meetings. I would rather just be able to you know, be civil and, and have some common sense in some senses that way. As far as uh, videotaping meetings, I think we should have both. I'm sure there's some privacy. I'm not currently on the board. Um, I think that there are probably some uh, privacy issues that should be in closed door session, but if it's a public meeting, public meeting, just be transparent. And yes, they can definitely videotape and whatever, you know, put it out to whoever. And it just expands, you know, just the more content, you got to feed those algorithm gods. So the more people that come in and tape the meeting and put it out, more people know. Thank you. Thank you, Vicente Cruz. Carlos Cohen. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I have to admit, I'm not familiar with Robert's rules, but I participated in hundreds, if not thousands of meetings through my career. I think that the main thing is the attitude and the openness. I participated in the public sector part of the LSB meetings in the last few months, and there is a lot of animosity and that takes a lot of time and energy and frustration. This is what I've been saying. We need to let be more open, listen to each other, agree to disagree, and try to move forward with ideas that we can, we, we can work together on. This, uh, to me, this is crucial. With respect to video, 
I would agree, except the privacy issues. I agree Thank with you. that. Yeah, the private- Thank you, Carlos Cohen. Yeah, and the- Fred Cook. Thank you. I am very much in favor of videotaping the and archiving the public segments of the meeting and anything that is not going to be public and videotaped and archived, there needs to be an explicit reason why, for example, a personnel issue or something that has to be, uh, has to be held private, that, that needs to be explained. Um, beyond that, I'd like to say that process, sociocracy has a good process. It's derived from consensus, but it's not as stringent. There's a, a meeting facilitation, the no magic method. There are a lot of other ways. And building in that understanding of we got to listen to and take seriously what the minority is bringing up. So Thank you. friendly amendments. Thank you, Fred Cook. Fred Dodsworth. I was first exposed to Robert's Rules of Order and Student Council 55 years ago. I currently sit on the Savo Island uh, board for uh, low-income housing. I uh, was a board member of, I am a board member of uh, BCA, Berkeley Citizens Action, a board member of the Beast Crawl, uh, which was, a, it, anyway, it's a big deal. Uh, generations, I've, I've sat on a lot of boards. Uh, in fact, I sit on a board with Donna Carter on uh, Save Alta Bates Hospital. The idea that people are gonna treat each other with respect is a wonderful one. Unfortunately in Berkeley, I have seen that more honored in the neglect and overview than in the actual attempt to create community. Uh, that's my point. Thank you. Thank you Fred Dodsworth, Thomas Lord. I'm a bit of a dissenter in that I happen to think Robert's rules are uh, incredibly well designed, uh, whether they're used to suppress debate or to encourage good and healthy discussion, falls on the chair and falls on the degree of comedy among uh, the members of the body. Uh, if a majority group wants to shut out the others, they can under these rules, but a chair can really, really discourage that. And also there's no reason for a body to have a fixed chair. It's a responsibility that can be shared and it can be shared uh, among both uh, majority and minority groups or factions or tendencies within the larger body. Um, I, I think really the spirit uh, of comedy needs to return. Um, this is why I think uh, having a non-slate candidate Thank is you. important. Thank you. Fred. Um, thank you, Fred Dodsworth. Uh Thomas Lord. Thomas Lord. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Did you just speak? I'm so sorry. Thank you, Thomas Lord. Uh, Pete Ferrugio. Yeah. Uh, Pete Ferrugio. I'm kind of at the end of the line here, and I've actually forgotten what the question was about. So I guess I'll just have to skip this one. Sorry. Um, Okay, uh, Donna Carter. Uh, I have attended numerous uh, California Nurses Association conventions and uh, familiar with uh, Robert's Rules of Order. Uh, yeah, I think the intention is to create civility, but the civility has to be in the hearts of the participants. Um, I believe taping the meetings would be a great way to reach out to our community. I've been able to watch a lot of city council meetings and other governmental uh, events on Zoom. And I think it would be great if KPFA's um, uh, process were open to the public. It, I think it would bring subscribers in. Thank you. So we're gonna move on to the last question. And this comes from Camilo from Oakland. You are live on KPFA, what is your question? Uh, not necessarily a question, but speaking as a young person, thank you for having the opportunity. Um, and I'm 30 years old, listening to KPFA from when I was younger, from my parents, and then also, you know, as a as an uh, adult. The whole time I've been listening um, to these older folks and older people who've been responding. So I just want to have the opportunity to really say something as a younger person. And so whatever you need to do to grab young folks, figure it out. 
um, social media, podcasts online. You all are very intelligent, so please figure it out and keep this station moving forward. Um, the herbal, then the last thing is like the, um, a lot of people when talking about different um, programs. Um, speaking again as a young person, the herbal highway and the visionary activist show are the two ones that I, I'm not really focused on. And and then also rising up with the knowledge. Thank you. Um, I that so. Um, Thank you, Camilo. Zach Kaltvier. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I feel like one of the big big lies is that uh, the youth today don't care. I mean, no one has more at stake than young people in the world that we are giving them. And I think we've seen that in the Sunrise Movement, we've seen that in the anti-gun, and we've seen that in Black Lives Matter. So rather than trying to tell them- Thank you. Am I done? That's 23 seconds. Yeah, uh, we have very, everybody has to keep this response very brief. We only have three minutes left, so- oh, Okay, okay, sorry. sorry about that. Don McClay? Uh, I never thought the youth didn't care. <laughs> um, I feel like we need to, to convince the youth that we care about them. Well, the and we need to get them to be not involved just in our ideas, but us to get involved in theirs. That's what I, I mean. really think the rest is just speculation. Yeah. Thank you, Don McClay. Adisa Armand. I believe that youth from uh, underrepresented communities need to be on board and they've got fantastic ideas. I did a very brief survey and uh, nobody heard of KPFA. And so I said, well, if I, if I could get you involved, would you? And, and they said, yes. So it's up to us to, to do some one-on-ones, to talk to people. Okay say you are invited thank you table we have we have one minute left richard stone uh yes uh, i myself have personally reached out to uh uh, uh, young people to get involved, uh, you know, with the uh, you know, you know, KPFA. I'm inspired by the, you know, what from what I've seen with the uh, the Apprentice program, and uh, even 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 my son was uh, briefly involved, uh, you know, as as, as Apprentice. So yes, I I think that. Thank uh, you. That's an LSB, but um, yeah. Amber Giante. Um, bring him on. Bring the kids in. We need them. They're the new blood. <laughs> They're the future. Gosh, thank you for calling in, young person, young thank man. You. <laughs> I really appreciate you. James, James McFadden. If we want to reach the youth, something that wasn't mentioned at all, student debt. We should be talking about student debt, but also about health care, poverty, housing, homelessness, policing, war, climate change, of course, is at the top of their list but also white supremacy and corporate manipulation. This is what the youth want to hear about. Thank you. If we're not talking about it. It's not going to happen. Thank you, Vicente Cruz. Yeah, if they're not here, it's because we have not given them a reason. And I do believe that we have not given them a reason. We've actually failed them. Um, I also, I love the Visionary Activist Show, but I can completely see why youth might not. And we should really take that into account when it comes to programming as far as switching from podcast, maybe that is a podcast. Thank you. I think we had first Car Carlos, right? Yes. Correct. Yes. Um, correct. Okay, so Carlos. Okay, uh, well, essentially uh, this, I totally agree with the young man. I thank him for calling. I think this is part of the, what I was saying. The program, the, the LSB has to get out to the community, reach out to progressive nonprofit organizations, unions, churches, uh, and, and we will get, if we listen to them and we give them a voice, they will come. So I'm convinced of that. I'm hoping to bring more people. I agree with the topics that James McFadden listed. So I'm hoping that we will attract more young people. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Fred Cook. As part of community advisory board or uh, an LSB committee, one of the things that I would want to do is work with local schools, high schools, colleges to develop 
production programs, production training programs and production teams of young people, and then find slots within our broadcast schedule where their productions can be included. Thank you. Fred Dodsworth. The world is full of bosses and what we need are more workers. We need people who chop wood and carry water. If I get on the board, that's what I intend to do. As an LSB member, it is my responsibility to reach out to every community I can find and get them integrated into this wonderful asset that has been neglected for far too long. Thank you, Elizabeth Milos. Yes, one of the main things that we have to make sure for youth is that this station and the Pacifica radio network is alive and complete and intact for the youth of tomorrow. Um, this is the last of the truly independent radio stations, uh, radio networks rather, uh, and um, youth are more in tune with social media than, and, uh, and they're actually seeking very hungry for information from alternative sources. So we need to get, step up to the plate, stop the infighting, and also stop the lawsuits that uh, the protectors, sectors of the protectors are continuing to do against Pacifica. That's not helping and that's not contrib contributing towards uh, working together. Thanks. Okay, next is Thomas Lord. Uh, okay, so I, I say um, take microphones out of the building and go find where younger people are organizing, where they're being active and where they're having fun and get that on the air. Uh, we don't have a shortage of time slots. We have plenty of uh, kind of boring um, syndicated programming. We have repetition of pretty good programming um, that could be freed mm -hmm. up for new stuff, yep. Pete Ferrugia? Yeah, so when we're talking about youth, we're talking, in my opinion, we're talking about people way under 30 years old. Uh, and I agree with the last comment. We should get the microphones into the hands of apprentices and volunteers, whatever it takes, and go to the schools. And uh, you can't get inside the schools, but there's lots of ways to reach kids through their parents or just their teachers or whatever, <laughs> and ask them questions about uh, what it's like being back in school, for example, uh, with, you know, Thank the you. only voices we're hearing are the adults putting kids into what I think are unsafe schools right now. What, what do kids think? Okay. Thank you. And I believe we're wrapping it up with Donna. Yeah. Or we have, yes. Okay. I'd like to second the idea of getting uh, programming training in the schools or in community groups and having segments where youth can talk. I saw, I, uh, I've heard that on the radio before and it's very effective. Uh, we need to go out with the microphones. Uh, we, make, we need to make KPFA available to the community and the youth. Thank you. 